Today, I am going to be trying pan pastels and colored pencil with powder blender on the new Lux Archival sanded paper. Just for transparency, this paper was provided to me by brushandpencil.com to try out, but the opinions in this video are my own. I was not otherwise paid for this video. So completely my own opinions here. Before we get started, just kind of a quick thing I wanted to share because I thought it was pretty cool. This piece got used in an advertisement in the Colored Pencil Magazine. If you are not already signed up for the Colored Pencil Magazine, I will put a link in the video description. No, this is not a sponsorship or anything like that. It's just a cool magazine. I thought I'd share it and I was pretty excited that this made it into it. If you're supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the two-part version, a total of three hours and 40 minutes for this demonstration. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer one to two, sometimes three or four hour long tutorials. I have a new one for you every single week, along with my entire library of about 200 other tutorials and multiple medias. If you want to find out if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I do have a free two hour long colored pencil demonstration over on my Patreon library. I'll put a link to that in the video description as well if you'd like to check that out. For this one, I am working on a 16 by 20 inch paper. I've taped it down to my drawing board and I'm using pan pastels to fill in that background. I wanted to go with something that was striped, so what I did first was just take my lighter color and block that in everywhere. I am using soft tools to apply the pan pastels. I'll also use soft tools to blend with my powder blender later on. Just gonna fill that all in. Now I drew out my stripes. I sat there and measured with a piece of paper to try to make sure they were as close as possible. I am going to make these kind of fuzzy on the edges. I don't want them perfectly, perfectly smooth. So if they were a little off, it wasn't gonna be a big deal given that I was going to smudge these out. I am blending this with the colored pencil out with a little bit of powder blender. Gonna darken the edges a bit more. And then I want to get a little bit of a vignette look, so I also darkened around the edges of the paper altogether, even on the light stripes. Blended that out. Now it takes very, very little powder blender to blend this, especially given that I'm going on top of pan pastel, so it's already going to blend really well anyway. Lightening up some of these stripes, and I'm using one of the, the soft tools sponges to really get that rougher look that I wanted for that background. Darken up those stripes a bit more. And now I'm going to start on the details of the fish. So we'll start with this yellow tang. Remember when you are blending things with yellow, do not jump to black for your shadows. I mean, usually I would say don't jump to black for the shadows anyway, but this is especially important when you're working with yellow and orange. You get this kind of weird greenish color that usually is not what you want. Now there are exceptions to that, but if at all possible, when you're blending with over a yellow area, using purples and magentas, oranges, reds, those are generally going to be far better choices for blending on top of yellow. And especially with colored pencil, because that that's going to blend in whatever color you blend on top of it. It's going to mix in with that yellow. And that's where you get some of these really not so nice colors. They'll come out kind of muddy. Or very muddy, I should say, of using black. We've got a little teeny jellyfish up here. One of the things that I love so much about fish and coral or drawing and painting fish and coral is you can change their color pretty drastically because if you put them under a different light, they're going to look totally different anyway. And a lot of different coral come, like we'll say zoas, they come in any color combination I think you could imagine. So you have a lot of freedom in thinking, okay, I think a pink coral would look good here. You just find a good photo of a coral and then make it pink. It, it doesn't have to start pink. You just turn it pink. You can do that really freely with a lot of corals. If you are looking for really high definition, high resolution photos of corals, I am signed up for Tidal Gardens. Tidal Gardens is a coral vendor that they have a channel here on YouTube. They also have a Patreon channel where they provide, re because they take such high quality res or high resolution photos of their, their corals, they provide that to artists to use in our artwork. I will put a link to that in the video description. You get a ton of photos every single month for as little as I wanna say $5 a month. Wonderful wonderful Patreon uh, reward there. 
So moving on to just the base layer of these corals. I don't have to have them finished. I just want to get a base on them. I'm going to get a lot of white highlights when I use my touch up texture titanium white over this. You can see again with that yellow coral, just like with the fish, I'm going to do a lot of shading with magentas and oranges, purples. Those are much better choices than black for shading those guys. Get the horns in there, or well, antlers. I'm bad at words. No one's surprised if you've been around for very long. For the darker shadows on that coral, I used a darker purple. Now, most of the pencils that I'm using for this project are my Faber-Castell Polychromos. These pencils blend beautifully with Powder Blender. With Powder Blender, I don't like to use my wax-based pencils. So in my case, I that would be the Caran d'Ache Luminance. Um, if you use Prismacolor, those I, would also fall into this category. I would save those for your final layers. For the layers where you're blending out, you wanna use a nice oil-based pencil. They're going to blend way better. For a pencil that has a very high wax content, it just sticks too much to the paper, so the Powder Blender can't get it to move and blend out so nicely. With the Powder Blender, you're, you're able to make your oil-based pencils behave very much like a pastel pencil, but with less mess and without that chalky feel, it, you guys who know me know I am really weird about pastel feel, the chalk on my hands, it really freaks me out. Like I, I, I have issues, I can't handle it. So this is an alternative. I can get that pastel look that I love so much, but with my colored pencils. It saves a lot of time. They blend out so nicely and so quickly. This 16 by 20 inch piece, I spent two weeks on it. If I weren't so busy during those two weeks, I could have had it done in a week, which is a pretty big deal given the size of this. And then especially using Pam Pastels as the background, that just saved a ton of time. I've done 16 by 20 where it was just straight colored pencil. And I'm not saying I won't do that again. I do enjoy working with OMS or Odorless Mineral Spirits and colored pencil, but man, you can get so much done so quickly with this method using Pam Pastels for a background, using colored pencil and powder blender on sanded paper. And the sanded paper, this is, it's still smooth. It's tech Textured, but it's also smooth enough you can get really nice fine details. Here you can see I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits. This paper handled the OMS very, very well. That's what's on that brush there. I need to make sure if I'm using that with, just a quick tip about that, and I do need to make a separate video talking about this, but a quick tip about using odorless mineral spirits with powder blender, make sure you've sprayed your texture fixative. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about with these products, make sure to check out my video that walks you through the basics of using powder blender. Um, but with that, as long as I've sprayed my texture fixative, then went over it with colored pencil, then that layer I can blend with the OMS. But like here, where I just blended with powder blender, I wouldn't want to then use OMS on top of that. I'm gonna create this weird pasty mess. You wanna make sure the texture fixative is sprayed over any area where you've blended out with powder blender if you choose to use OMS. You don't need to, you can work just fine without it. It's completely, you get to make a whole lot of choices. This is a very flexible way to work. So here, this is where I'm using Touch Up Texture and Titanium White. I will have a card pop up or a link in the description showing you a video of how I use this. But this is completely archival. This is, it looks like I'm using white acrylic paint and a lot of people think, well, can I use white ink or white acrylic paint? Yeah, if you don't care if your work is archival. If you want your work to be archival, meaning it's not gonna fall apart, that's not gonna chip or flake off, then you wanna use this product. This is the only product on the market made specifically for use over colored pencil. And and it is wonderful. I love that stuff. It made a big difference. It's definitely one of my must must haves when it comes to colored pencil. It made a huge difference in how I work because I'm so easily, whether I'm working on regular colored pencil on let's say hot press watercolor paper, blending with OMS, so I don't even have to use powder blender or sanded paper with this. If I need to put in whiskers, fine hair on an animal, li those little details, little sparkles in water, snow, the sparkle of snow, I couldn't get that very easily with colored pencil before. It was really difficult. It could be done very difficult. Oh, it was a pain. I, I, I can't stress how much of a pain it was. Now with a touch up texture and titanium white mixture, I can just paint that over. And if it, I think, well, I want highlights of yellow, not of white, because that is a white product. Let it dry, put my yellow pencils over it, and the yellow just pops so much where it wouldn't if I tried to put a yellow pencil over, let's say a blue background. So that is, 
I, I just can't say enough about that product. It really made a difference in how I work. Made my life way better. So we're going to go through some seriously ugly stages on this poor guy here for blocking in the base layer. Big tip for you. When you are drawing an animal and you look at him and go, he's tan, tan does not mean yellow. I avoid it most, unless there's a yellow glow from the sun casting on the animal, that would be the only exception I can really think. I do not use yellow pencils or yellow paint in my, in fur at all. I really, really avoid that. Tan, yes. Purples, uh, grayish tones, you, all of those, yes. Magentas, all, pretty much every color except yellow. I kind of avoid green too, but yellow especially. A lot of people will look at, let's say, a yellow lab and think, well, yellow lab, yellow. Nope, no yellow at all. Those are tans, purples, magentas. You're not going to use yellow. Avoid yellow in fur. Unless, and like I said, there are, there are exceptions to everything. As much as I'd like to come up with hard rules in art, there will always be an exception. And there are times where the way that the sun is casting, especially at a sunset, on an animal, you'll get this yellow glow around the edge. It's possible that yellow would be the choice on certain in certain cases, but more often than not, you want to avoid it. If done correctly at the right time, it can look amazing, but this is not that time. You can see I'm using a lot of purple. I wanted this guy to be really colorful. So I pulled in extra purple, extra blue, extra magenta for the shadows. Getting a few highlights in here. Now, one of the things I love about working on sanded paper with, there are a lot of things, but one of the big things that I'm in love with with sanded paper, I have white polychroma. So when I, I used to work with just Prismacolor years and years ago, and I got sick of the quality control issues with them. Switched to Faber-Castell polychromas, and I thought it was going to be very similar to Prismacolor in that I used to use a lot of white. I burned through my white pencil so fast. What I didn't realize is that the white polychromos is fairly translucent, much like a lot of the other colors, which is not ideal for a white pencil. So I, I had a ton, I had bought so many, I must have paid, bought like 15. I mean, I bought a lot of extra thinking I was gonna need those. Yeah, no, not so much. But now that I have sanded paper, the white polychromos shows up beautifully, nice and opaque on the sanded paper. Getting that hint of fur mixed in there. Just get some of those little marks for the, the fur. Now, when you're drawing fur, make sure to let it kind of overlap. You don't just want to put a bunch of lines that are separated. That looks like confetti. You want to watch how that fur clumps and clusters together. That is so important in making fur look realistic. Really look at your reference photo. How does that fur move? Where does it switch direction? And how is it clumping and clustering together? Don't make confetti fur. It looks terrible. I think there's some terrible joke about a party animal in there somewhere. I'm going to soften all that out. Now, I was thinking I wasn't going to pull blues, the background color, into him. So I put a lot of work, or, or I wasted a lot of time, I should say, drawing the fur, getting that in on his body, and I realized I just didn't like it. I felt that it was pulling attention away from the coral in his antlers and away from his face. So what I did, and you'll see this later on, I pulled the, or actually, I don't even know if it's on the video, but I pulled with the pan pastels. I just put that on top of the colored pencil, the same teal colors that I used in the background. I pulled to darken up the body around the edge and it really helped center the attention back on his face, back on his antlers and the coral there. But when it was so bright, like you're seeing now, it just was really drawing my attention to the wrong area of the paper. Building up those clumps and clusters of fur there. And look how, even though the fur is technically white, it's cast in shadow. So I'm pulling the blue and the purples into that shadow under his neck or under his face in the front of his neck. I don't know. I'm bad at words. So I tried pulling purple to darken it up. Still was just a little too drawing attention on the body there. Didn't love that. 
That's the other thing that I really love about working on. We should just title this this video, Things Lisa Loves, <laughs> about sanded paper. But one of the things that I love about working on sanded paper is that I can change my mind and go right over something very much like I would in acrylic. So usually if I was working on hot press watercolor paper with colored pencil and OMS, my the way I had worked previously to learning about sanded paper. Uh, well, and I still work that way. I don't make, wanna make it sound like I gave that up. But when I worked that way, I, I never really did anything surreal real with colored pencil because if I have an, some random idea and then realize, wow, that was a terrible idea, that didn't look good, I couldn't easily change it. Here, I could throw in extra fish. I could add an extra antler. I could make him a unicorn. I can do anything I want on this and go right over it and you'll never know that I came up with that after the fact. It will look like it was initially in the design, like it, 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 I can blend it in and work it into the, the piece seamlessly. You can layer on top of layer on top of layer that you can't quite do on the other papers that I had typically worked with on colored pencil. And so that's why if I'm going to do something surreal and I want to work in colored pencil, I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to choose sanded paper. It will definitely be my go-to. Like here, here are some bubbles. I didn't have to draw those in previously. If I were working on hot press watercolor paper, I probably would have. Here, I can, can make up my mind on where I think they'll look good at the end, at the very end, without negatively affecting it. If I had done that background in on hot press watercolor paper to get that saturation, I would have had a hard time getting those color, those bubbles to really show up. Not a problem here. You can do so many layers on this paper so it feels a lot more, or I feel like I have the same freedom that I do working in acrylics or oil paint on canvas, where you're just unlimited on the changes you can make. The You can change anything forever. I have never hit a point where I just couldn't add more. And for me, with surrealism, because that'll change my mind every five minutes, that's a big deal. Add some final details and shadows in there. And you'll see me start switching to some of my wax based pencils. You saw the Karen Dosh luminance in there. I think I used some of, well, although they're they're considered a oil base, they are a bit um, higher in the wax content than the polychromos, but the Derwent luminant, or words are hard again, the Derwent light fast, I used those in here a bit too. Some highlights on those fish, and there we go. There is my finished piece. This paper is definitely, I can say without a doubt, the best sanded paper on the market. You're not gonna find better. It is is archival on the front and the back, and that's a big deal. I didn't realize until more recently that the Fisher 400, which was my previous preference, and the UART 500, or any of the UART products, the back of the paper, not acid free. They don't tell you that. Yeah, the front is, but the back can over time eventually affect the front and that concerns me. I'm not personally really comfortable with that. So moving forward, this is without a doubt my favorite. And the, there are just so many benefits to this paper anyway. It's great because it's not as messy as other sanded paper. It feels to me like the pan pastels and the colored pencil, it just sticks better. And I don't mean sticks as in you're not able to blend it out. It's just there was less fallout. And if you've used sanded paper with colored pencil or even pastels, you'll know what I mean. The pencil kind of falls off the paper. It doesn't with this. It just, it well, it does a little, but not to the extent that it did on other sanded paper. I guess I should clarify that. But I I had so much less mess with this paper than any other sanded paper I've used. And I'm fairly neurotic about things being clean. And so that's that alone's a big deal. You're you've got a paper that is completely white, so your colors are going to be more pure than they would be on an off-white paper. I, I could go on for hours. This paper is absolutely wonderful. So I thought I would share what I have been working on during our self-quarantine, I guess. This was what my backyard looked like pretty much when we moved in. We moved in in, what was it, November, early November, and there had been a heavy frost. I had never seen my yard green except the weeds. So, And this was actually after I had already weeded about half of them. I had to, It took me a week to get rid of all those green spots you see right there are weeds. Those all had to be hand pulled, which turned out... It's a bit of an addiction. I weirdly really enjoy pulling weeds. Yes, there is something wrong with me. I think it just gives me a reason to be outside. So that is what the backyard looked like. You can see the, the grass, the actual grass is dormant, tree is dormant. So after all of the weeds were done being pulled, I went ahead and planned what my landscaping was going to look like. So this was, again, back during the winter. 
absolutely terrible. This is it now. I still have a lot of dead spots in the grass, which we are going to have to talk to the builder about and see if they can do anything about it. I don't think they're going to. I think I'm just going to have to get some more sod, which is fine. So here was the first planter that I did. And I did this completely by myself. I'd never done anything like it. I was so incredibly proud of myself for, and I only planted the three smaller shrubs you see up front, which turn into bee food later in the year. But once I planted those, I was so proud of myself. I thought, hey, I think I will go ahead and plant the crepe myrtles that I wanted to get, which I ended up ordering online. I will plant those myself. Yeah, those require way bigger holes. And Texas clay, you don't dig holes with shovels. You dig them with pickaxes. That was quite a workout that I wasn't completely expecting. I don't regret it. Okay, I take that back. I completely regretted every single decision I had ever made in life while I dug the holes. But once it was done, I was so incredibly proud of myself. And it was a good workout. That is way more fun than going to the gym that we can't go to even if we went regularly. I don't. I don't know why I'm actually even bringing up the gym. I don't go to the gym. So anyway, here is what I did. I had to pull the grass from that area. I put down the edging. That edging is actually really heavy. It's recycled tires, which I thought was a pretty cool thing to use for edging. So I put down the edging. I pulled the grass, which I already mentioned. I pickaxed. I can't even say dug. I pickaxed the five holes for the crepe myrtles, got them planted, did the whole, you know, you it takes a lot of work to plant a tree because when you pull it out of the pot, you have to break up those roots. Did all of that, got them in, then dragged out the, dragged, drug? I don't know how, how what the past tense of that is. Dragged out the it was 20 bags of mulch and I need more, but this is not the time to go get it. So that's on hold. But I dragged out all of the mulch and put that along the back wall. My muscles were so incredibly sore, but it was also probably the one of the things I'm most proud of myself for having accomplished. I was so excited about it. That tree, by the way, totally screwed up putting lights in there. You can see it's all at the bottom, not at the top. Yeah. Not my best work, I need to redo that. But here it is in the dark. I'm using solar lights for everything back here. Not so great on rainy days, but it's Texas, so mostly we have sun and they, it just looks so nice. It, I wanna spend all my time in the backyard. I think I need to set up an easel out here and figure out a way to combat mosquitoes. But this is kind of like my own little personal heaven now, which is nice being that we're stuck at home. So most of my time, if I have any free time, like I take so many breaks during the day just to go sit out and admire the, the hard work I did. And I'm really glad that I did it myself, not just because it saved a ton of money, but the fact that I look at that knowing I did that. I did that all by myself. Seriously, can I mention again how proud I am of myself on this one? So there we go. The plants and the shrubs are all, all have bee food. So that's a really cool thing about them. I've got some lily turfs that I ordered online. They will be here probably next week. I'm going to be planting some really pretty variegated lily turfs around the crepe myrtles. And I don't know what that little zoom in thing is there. I thought I was getting fancy with the gimbal. Wasn't so fancy. There we go. There's my bird feeder there with the bird bath and seed. They haven't figured out the seed is in there. It takes a couple of weeks usually. So yeah, that was what I have been doing in quarantine, taking some breaks there. Let me know what you guys have done. Have you accomplished any fun yard work or gotten hopefully lots of artwork done with all of our self-isolation? Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos. Hopefully a lot more coming up now that everything is settling down here. And you may wanna hit that notification button because YouTube is really bad about notifying people when new videos go up.